you're free to ask any questions. Yeah, I have a question. I mean, uh, I'm somehow missing the, the total calculation for, let's say, just an example, a household. Um, if you want to preserve the summer energy to winter, then you would need, let's say, for the months where you don't have any solar energy, November, December, January, February, you would need on the average maybe five, 6,000 kilowatt hours energy. And the storage is still the big challenge in that game, not to produce hydrogen, but store it uh, over a long time. And um, I'm missing a little bit how much energy can be stored in this uh, trailers you, you you said. I guess it should be in the range of what also PK or HPS is doing. Um, so just for a household, just for the for the heating, you would need several trailers for a normal household or something like that. I mean, that is still the challenge and and, and therefore, what is your experience? How many trailers does a normal household would need as a storage capacity for hydrogen? And the other question is, as I said before, there is methanol. I mean, of course, you have another step uh, to produce methanol out of uh, hydrogen, but that makes it easily to uh, store because you can store it in any kind of tank you have, even in a plastic tank. And that is my question. Are you working on methanol producing? Because then we would have no issue anymore with all these uh, metal uh, bottles and all the things which are, uh, if you have to buy a lot, which are pretty expensive. Okay, I will, I will try to answer the first question because actually there's, of course, there's no answer to that because it depends if you heat your house with this energy and you Re reproduce electricity then there's a question with what do you produce electricity use do you use a combustion engine or a fuel cell because they have different efficiencies so you will get more or less out of your hydrogen bottles are so expensive so mostly uh, most uh, hydrogen users will start with too little of hydrogen storages like yeah i think uh I think uh, if you if you use a fuel cell only to make your electricity needs and the electricity need is rising, then you would need three bundles, three 16 bundles for to get through the entire winter. If mm -hmm. you uh, a trailer is just nine bottles, yes. So it's uh, just this just an estimation. Five trailers would would be then roughly, and this is a big amount of. Uh, money and a big amount of uh, storage space you would need for all the bottles somewhere, right? So and therefore, yes. I'm still so. I'm still asking, uh, why not making methanol? Methanol you can easily carry with a with a with a can from here to there, and of course, there's another step, and you need CO two for this. Uh, but that would get rid of all these storage problems, and you could even store it over two three years. If you have uh, one year, and you could burn it in, or not burn, but use it in cars as, uh, as um, with a stack. Yeah, of it's, a holy, it's a holy grail. So that would we be a universe it. energy, easily storable, easily um, transportable, and usable for different purposes. That is what I would... No, it's not easy because uh, it's another component, and it's easier to reduce your energy consumption. So... Um, a, a, a reformer, a methanol reformer, I should open a picture of this, works under temperatures of more than 300 degrees Celsius. You need the, the CO2 and the hydrogen always in a stereometric, I don't know how to say that in proper English, so in the right quantity. So you need a digital system measuring the quantity of hydrogen and the pressure of a cylinder will lower. So you need to open the valve with a computer and then on the other side, you, you need to adjust the valve of the CO2, but also you have the cir cir circular um, leftover from, from the reformer, which is like unknown. So you need to measure the concentration after you mix it all to have always the right input. And then the methanol will, will come out like uh, with maybe 80% water. 
So after the mesonol reformer, you would need to distill the mesonol because uh, when there's 80% water in the condensate, yeah, you can't, you can't use it directly. We have one mesonol reformer in the university and the university is working on a bigger one for a, with, a fun, with funding money because this costs millions to develop this uh, technology. This is the kind of, we know it works in theory, but practically this is still a big, big challenge. So of course, ammonia, methanol, we can, uh, we can talk about that for ages, but this in my eyes is just a dream to avoid reducing your energy consumption. Because what we do right now is we throw the energy out of the window and we burn it with fossil on the other hand. And we never thought about combining things, reducing things, because we will hardly get there. If, if, you, if you think about the energy input, so when a met methanol reformer ha would have an efficiency of 40% after distillation, that, uh, which is like very optimistic, then you have the making hydrogen with an efficiency of 60% times the efficiency of making methanol with 40%. At the end, you need double your solar area to make the methanol, which you dream of, just to have an energy dense liquid energy carrier. Hydrogen as such is, is, is so easy to make. So why not stick to the easy stuff and adopt our habits? Of course, because you it's can't so store hard. It. I mean, I don't say that we need it. Uh, we should, of course, save energy before, but also cars and trucks, I mean, you have to compress it to 700 bars and that's also a big hydrogen that's a big challenge as well and, and you should know how many costs involved with a fuel station for for um ho2 so i mean with methanol you could also avoid these things or the infrastructure to 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 put it in cars and trucks so the effect is we do not have a uh, fuel stations for hydrogen and we do not have the trucks and the cars as we wish uh, we would like to have the hydrogen cars because of the storage issue and, and, and the 700 bar uh, pressure issue. So everybody wants to have a truck running on hydrogen, but the challenge is still how to store it and bring it into the truck. And therefore, I believe solar panels are so cheap compared to everything else and everybody has a big roof. So even with a 40% uh, efficiency, it would make sense to produce a, a methanol or something else because after you have produced the methanol, uh, you can use it for anything else without really putting big efforts in, in refueling cars or burning it in your house uh, with a stack and also then using in the winter the, the waste energy, the heat energy with, which a fuel stack is producing. So, I mean... After, I mean, it's a big step to make methanol, but in the end, if you have it, it's so uh, universal energy, easily transportable over years. So I personally believe it is poisonous. More energy, you don't you energy in, not in forget energy. that it is poisonous. You shouldn't forget that it's a hazard. Uh, and also, the seven hundred bar, uh, I think, is uh, is a uh, is a grip to the stars. It's like. If you don't mm. want to change, then you do such desperate things. But 700 bar is just Yeah, so you have to not buy use 700. You mean you, you have to use 700 bars right now in cars? Yes. Otherwise, it doesn't work. So that's a that, that's yeah. fact, and that's exactly what we face today. So, yeah. But uh, really uh, hydrogen a gas said. station with 700 bars costs millions of euros. Yes. Just think you go down to 300 bars, and then it will cost you a fraction of that. Yeah, why maybe. don't you do that? Well, why don't doing, you just consume less? We don't need stations, to... but yeah, maybe that's the idea that that to reduce it to 300. I don't know if it's technically feasible, but what we're now trying with 700 bars is simply too cost intensive and takes too much effort in technology. So, thank you. Yeah, yeah you're right. I agree. Yeah, so you think methanol is on the short notice? No, there's no way or no plans or no um, way to do methanol out of all the re redispatched energy of the summer. And that is still something. We're talking about redispatched energy, and it still will be like that. And if we produce methanol, even if it's 40% uh, efficiency only, 
we have used the redispatched energy, which is done still not wasted. So anything renewable, whether maybe not that good of efficiency, is better than nothing. So that's what I will believe. A roof with a black roof without a solar uh, panel has 0.0, .0 efficiency. A roof with solar panels, renewable, of course, everybody knows, and just producing 25% methanol out of that uh, roof it is 25% more than just not using it. So anything, any renewable energy, even if not that good of efficiency, is a win for, for, for everybody. That's my point of view on that. But okay, I don't want to stress it too much. So you don't have any idea for methanol, unfortunately. But um, yeah, I would like more investigation in that uh, technology. Okay, thanks. Yeah, I will keep you posted. As soon as there's a commercial methanol reformer uh, mm -hmm. in the market, we can uh, we can uh, put it in the list, but it won't be under one megawatt. Or Okay, yeah, then we are maybe back to what did Habeck say, Quartierspeicher. So if we then locally have, let's say, a community with 100 houses or something, then this would be maybe an idea to or to um, put a big methanol reformer in a street and then connect maybe the local houses around it. So at least as a vision, I could imagine that this could work if methanol reformers are not efficient in very small units. So then we are, he called it Quartierspeicher and he wanted to do the batteries, but everybody knows how big should the battery be to uh, collect all the summer energy and transfer it to the winter for, 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 uh, for a street. This is simply for the moment, not, not manageable with batteries. So maybe we could do it with methanol. In big units. Okay, thanks. So if you hear something, I have something, I would be happy to be informed about that. Yeah, if you are a free member, you get always the notification about the new entries. Okay, and, and, and until then, we have to put it in, in, in bottles, okay, on, or in these uh, trailers. <laughs> okay. The hydrogen. Yeah, so uh, it's 500 kilowatt hours in a bundle. So 500 kilowatt hours, this is the thermal potential. 500 kilowatt hours is a lot. I mean, I don't know uh, what is the problem. 500 kilowatts I mean, per, per bottle, Andy? Or per... No, it's a 16 er bundle. I will open a picture, yeah? So it's 16 bottles so... and all together it's 500 watt kilowatts. All together, it's 500 kilowatt hours. Mm -hmm. If so if you take the burning potential, if you want to make electricity with a fuel cell, it is times zero four, mm -hmm. and it is only um, 300 kilowatt hours. I just say a number. I'm not good in uh, in fast calculations. So, and if you use a combined heat and power station, it's again 10% uh, less. Then, but you will have the heat, so you have always to have this equation. <clears throat> But yeah, a 16 a bundle is 500 kilowatt hours. I mean, that's a lot of energy. You can reduce yeah. to that easily. I, I, I don't need so much. You, I mean, still, if you would have to store it from summer to winter, you would need more. I have a very good isolated house. It's real modern. I do with heat pump, of course, like you should as of today. But I still need for the winter period for, for the heating, I need 2000 kilowatt hours of uh, of power. Electricity is the most noblest energy you can have and you should always try to use it directly. So of course, but you can. if you but heat you with electricity, you take the noblest energy and make like the the unnoblest energy because even it's not on a high temperature level. So if we go to thermal yeah. energy, 80 degrees has a higher uh, thermal potential or energy potential than 35 degrees. So this whole, so yeah, maybe I should add that to my end point. Um, if you if you still do not have a heat pump, maybe have, just save I the have. money, um, just save and the money and wait, uh, wait uh, until your house is insulated. I have a very efficient heat pump, I have a very efficient house and 2000 kilowatt hours is not much. And, but that's the range. A lot. Is a lot. 
2,000 kilowatt hours is 20,000 people bicycling. Yes, so it's a lot of yeah, energy. Things. 500 kilowatt yeah. hours is if you go with an electrical car and it's 20 kilowatt hours, you can do 2,500 kilometers, that's it. And the second step is also fueling your car, electromobility. Where is that uh, energy coming from in the winter when there's no uh, when there's no exactly. So that's also need to be. So 500 kilowatt is not that much as long as you only want to use your lights or your TV set in the winter. If it comes to heating and mobility, you need to store a lot of energy for the winter if you want to preserve it from the summer. And that's the challenge. Of course, that's the challenge. Still the challenge, the big challenge we have. We have enough energy in summer, more, more, more than enough. And that refers exactly to that, what you said. And you wanted to ask us, what is the redispatched energy? And that is has to be used. And that to make it used, we have to store it somewhere. And that is still the biggest challenge we, we have. Right? Yeah. <laughs> So after I cut this video, I was asking myself, like, if you want methanol and you do not do hydrogen, how do you want to make methanol? So just start step by step and things will evolve. There uh, will not be any videos coming up soon because, as you know, on the north side of the planet, there is no sun to make hydrogen right now. But we have plenty of good content if you are interested into converted diesel, hydrogen engines or HHO cars or whatever. Feel free to look the videos we already made. There's a bunch. There's also one about a, a methanol reactor we had at the university I studied. Thank you very much for watching.